Welcome back to what I would call the last episode of this build project. It doesn't mean that I'll stop upgrading this setup, not at all, I have plenty of great ideas for the future, but after this episode I would say it's ready to be called my cockpit 3.0, that has been the plan all from the beginning. In my previous cockpit I had power control panel for Star Citizen. It wasn't that useful itself, but it was just fun little nice addition that I still want to be part of this setup. But this episode isn't just about building a Star Citizen power control panel. It's about starting to build the first game specific, specific model that I can use, adding stuff here, plug it in, in and dropping it in place. So let's just jump to my basement workshop and get working. Okay, so building a simple power control panel for Star Citizen. It's going to have buttons for power triangle, and yes, I know, the meta is all or nothing, and I have those stuff configured to my joystick, but I just want to have this as an extra thing, because it, lo it looks nice. And it's going to have toggle switches for different systems like weapon, weapons, engines, and shields. Normally, you would want to use spring-loaded momentary toggle switches if you're use, using them for games, because they come back and it's basically the same thing as a button. In this case, I'm going to use these things. This is basically latching switch, which means it, it stays where I li leave it. And this is on-on switch, which means that it always going to keep one button pressed. This is not optimal for games like Star Citizen and most of, most of the games, since they don't support this sort of things. But in this case, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to show you soon how. But before I'm going to start building this stuff, I'm just going to show you quickly that how I'm going to wire everything up. Getting the information from this switch or for any button to the game is actually quite simple. This thing here is a Leo Botner board. It has place, places, this board has places for 64 buttons and I just connect this with USB to the computer and the computer sees this already as a game controller. So I'll just have to attach these wires here and here and basically these will act as buttons for any game. Uh, but that's not enough for me in this case. I want this panel to display the state the different systems like engines are on. And since we cannot pull any game data out of the game at least yet and not in foreseeable future we just need to make our own funding. And in this case, that's why I'm using two channel versions. So the one channel basically controls the buttons and the second channel controls controls the LEDs. So when I just switch this, uh, this position, it light us, lights up the green LED and down it light, light us, lights up the red LED. And now I'm just going to need a panel. And as always, I designed the panels in Fusion 360, print them in white PLA so they would be transparent and light would get through it, paint them black with the black spray paint, and then use laser engraver to make the markings in the panel. If you're interested in knowing more about my panel design process and how I have set up the power for my cockpit, you should check out, check out the episode 7 in this series where I, where I go into details regarding those stuff. So the panel came out quite nice. It's not perfect, but it's again good enough for me. And as always, I already have holes for LEDs and places for the switches and buttons here. Also, there's one thing worth noting. This is white PLA, so there is always naturally light leak from one LED to another. But I don't want these st status lights to affect everything else and Otherwise. So in this case I printed this with grooves and I printed a bunch of these black small pieces that I'm just going to add here. So there will be still something like one millimeter of white, white plastic but I'm just hoping that this will diminish the light leak significantly and it won't be an issue here. And then it was time to start assembling everything. First adding the LEDs in place and at this point I really need to make sure that I know where the positive side is and where the negative side is. And once I'm done with this, I'm just going to take my hot glue gun 
and make sure that they stay in place. And soldering. Lots of soldering in this project and I'm not really good at it and it's quite slow, but I can make two pieces of wire to stick together, so usually that's enough. At least I had the latest episode of Citizen Cast podcast for me to listen. Naturally, it's a good idea to check your components occasionally just to make sure everything is working. Now that I have the first toggle switch connected, I think it's good time to go through the setup again a bit better. So I have the positive wire here and the negative wire here. The positive wire goes to the center and from there to this LED circuit and from other side the other side. And negative goes naturally to the other side of the LED circuit. So now that I flip the switch, it just changes the, changes the LEDs that are currently on. And the empty Empty channel is naturally reserved for the for the buttons that go to the Leo button or board. But after this it's just a matter of adding the rest of the switches here and then wiring it up, which is going to take a while. Quite slow work with soldering this stuff on. Okay, this is now ready. And in a way this setup is future proof because I can always change the wiring so that these things are powered or controlled by some other thing, like in future if we have our Arduino that can get some data from APIs from the game. So next step, I'm just going to add these push buttons, buttons that are basically, they have 12 volt LEDs inside and I have a few of these already from my old setup, so I'll just need to figure out the best way to wire them so that there won't be any extra clutter and I can just attach them here easily. Now everything is in place and this thing is already looking quite good. The back side is a bit of a mess, but I think it could be much worse and this is a significant improvement to my previous panel. So next step is attaching the panel in its place and before I can do anything else, I'll need to make a hole for it. First step is measuring the placement of the hole and then marking it down. Here I'm drilling holes into each corner before I'm just going to take my jigsaw and cut away the piece. Since this cut is covered by the panel, it really doesn't matter if it doesn't look too pretty. As you might see here, I cut in two holes instead of just one because I also made this extra panel. Uh, I had this trackball lying around from my old cockpit and it's really nice looking. It can kind of see through transparent and has green LEDs also, so I just wanted to use it somewhere. I, in this case, I'm actually planning to use it so that I'm going to use this when I'm kind of walking on food, when I'm not really needing anything accurate, just kind of walking to my ship or something like that. I think this is kind of the same setup that After Amos Flight has, and I could bet that this is exactly the same trackball also that he, that he has. So, yeah, I would be better off just leaving this space for normal mouse, but this looks nice, so I decided that I'm just going to go with this for now. Then, just attaching everything in its place, and again using these black screws, which just make everything look so much better. After everything is placed, I am going to bring the 12 volt power cable here and connect everything so that it is easy to attach more panels in the future. After power cables are in place, it was finally time to attach all the buttons to the Leo button board. And as you can see, I have my computer open at the background so I can occasionally test that all the buttons work. And finally, tidying up some cables with chip ties. I guess this kind of gives you some view into what sort of messes these panels can be since you, you're going to need cables for the lighting and also for all the buttons. Also, if you're wondering about the franking cables I have here, I just didn't have a roll of really small wire at hand, so I just used what pieces I had available. Finally, 
back at the cockpit and putting everything in its place. And first thing I learned here was that I am definitely going to need a USB hub just for these slots. But the power cables are easy to connect in this case. The last step in this project is to configure everything properly. The case here is that I don't want Star Citizen to see that I am pressing certain button all the time. So in this case I am going to create a macro in Joystick Kremlin that is going to send the short button press to Star Citizen when I flick the switch. And the way to do this is use this action condition. And then I am just going to define that what is going to happen when the button is actually pressed. In this case, it will press the right VJOY button down, hold it down for a fraction of a second, and then will release the button. Once everything was working properly, just kind of the last icing on the cake, I 3D printed these finger guards for my switches. These are just basically black PLA and spray painted with the silver spray paint. But these are kind of really makes make everything look much better. And the final result is, I would say, quite nice. Last summer I was sitting here with my old cockpit in the background and starting this new project. My goal was basically to be finished with building this stuff during this year. And back then I kind of figured out that, well, that's the easy goal. I will most likely be finished much earlier, but these things take their time, always. And especially if you have small children and don't have that much time to work with your hobbies. And finally, I'm ready to say that this project is ready. And by ready, I mean that it's basically have the, all the same functionalities as my old cockpit. The final piece of the puzzle, puzzle was this Star Citizen power control panel. That naturally doesn't mean that I'm finished building this stuff, because with the modularity stuff, there's kind of endless possibilities that I, I can go into, especially if I'm going to start building stuff for DCS. And that will be one of my, my next year's projects is to build the Hornet models for this is my cockpit. And I also have lots of ideas to up, start design upgrades too. Oh, and the total cost of this build project was around 800 euros. A bit more than I was planning for, but I, I guess you're always going to blow your budget at least a bit. But in any case, I would like to thank everyone who has been watching these videos, commenting, supporting and stuff like that. This has been a really interesting project and this is really kind of, again, just the beginning. So thank you everyone, thanks for watching and see you next time.